Another classification of, of information is financial data and ESG data. So financial data we all know and they're mainly backwards looking. However, ESG data is mainly forward looking. You know, you, you can anticipate more how the companies run, what is happening, what is their water consumption compared to their competitors, what is their energy consumption, what is material to that company. I want to be very clear, ESG data does not replace financial data. It just adds on another information layer. So there's many, many studies, and, and one of the well-known is by Professor Eckers from Harvard University that shows you that if you invest a dollar into the group of companies with the highest rating on ESG compared to those with the lowest rating on ESG, the ESG companies will outperform over time. There can always be a short period in which they can underperform. That does happen. But over time, it will always outperform. <clears throat> it's also very important for corporates. Your funding spread is an, a critical element of the assessment of your ESG. Look at Abercrombie and Fitch, what happened. Or your assessment of your stocks, again, today is seriously affected by your ESG performance. So both sides feed each other, investors and corporates. And of course, from the investor side, there's the PRI, the Principles of Responsible Investing, the sister company, a sister organization of the United Nations Global Compact that represents the vast majority of the world's largest investor. And it's a strongly growing group of money that is committing to invest sustainably in the future. So it will become a self-fulfilling uh, mechanism. And then we should mention the very important role of the stock exchanges, particularly here in Thailand. SSE stands for Sustainable Stock Exchanges, which has been significantly a driving force behind the movement of sustainability. And uh, the, the Thai Stock Exchange was the first one in the ASEAN region that uh, subscribed to the Sustainability Stock Exchange um, group. <clears throat> in fact, we, we wrote down, and I think the, the presentation is available public to you, the key milestones of the Thai Stock Exchange, starting all the way from 2006 by issuing the principles of good corporate governance for listed companies to 2014, where you can see the commitment and the joining of the Stock Exchange movement in 2014. And very, very important milestones pushing the agenda ahead. So my bottom line on this topic is that I'm not saying that technology will replace asset managers, but asset managers who do use technology will replace those which do not. And that is something that we've seen in, in many other areas. So <clears throat> with that, I want to um, kind of wrap up the first part. And, and what I've tried to explain is that sustainability is a big movement. It's important. Corporates want it. Investors want it. It's a global theme. OK, we get all that. But how do we do it? What do we do? We sign the UN Global Compact. We sign the principles of responsible investing. We want to comply. But how do I do this as an investor? And when we try to build our company, our sustainable asset management service, this was the biggest challenge. So we subscribe to Stainlytics, MSCI, Reuters, and you keep doing and doing it. You know, they have strengths here and weaknesses there. Sometimes the analyst information is uh, too late, it's slow. Sometimes you need uh, more short-term information. The services are expensive. Uh, the service is inconsistent. You see some people rank Volkswagen very good, other ones very bad, and vice versa. So we had to figure this out. So what we built is we built a data hoover. We built a system that sucks in billions of data points from all the service providers, from 50,000 websites every single day in 15 languages, including Thai, from long-term analyst views across all the regional services. I built a technology that gives you three dimensions of investing. The UN Global Compact, ESG, and the personal preference. I want to share this with you in this uh, small clip. Welcome to S-Ray, the first tool of its kind to allow anyone to monitor the sustainability of thousands of the world's largest companies. Through the use of machine learning and big data, 
S-Ray systematically combines over 200 ESG metrics with analysis from over 50,000 news sources across 15 languages. Each company's extra financial performance is displayed in three ways through S-Ray. GC score, an assessment of each company based on the normative principles of the United Nations Global Compact, human rights, labor rights, the environment and anti-corruption. ESG score, a sector-specific analysis of each company's performance on financially material ESG issues. And preferences filter, a unique search tool that allows anyone to check how companies are compatible with their own personal values. We believe that S-Ray can empower all stakeholders to make better day-to-day -day decisions for a more sustainable future. Transparent, powerful, and available to all. This is S-Ray. So you realize that we, we chose the name S-Ray, like X-Ray, but S-Ray for sustainability ray. So what it does is like a X-Ray machine for corporates, sucking in all the data and giving you a ranking of corporates. What it really is, it's like I mentioned the, the, the electric car industry. So what, what the, the biggest challenge in the electric car industry is the battery. The biggest challenge for sustainability is you know, to look through corporations. So the S-Ray to us is like the battery we have built in order to understand corporates. And what it does, I want it simplified. You know, I want to give you like tons of text, it just delivers numbers. A score from zero to 100. And the only three things anybody's interested in. So the first one is the United Nations Global Compact Score. What is that? The UN issued in the year 2000 under Kofi Annan, the Global Compact. It's the world's largest corporate network, 8,800 members around the world. These are the world's, mainly the world's biggest corporates. And they sign up to the UN values, which is around the four principles, human rights, labor law, environment, and anti-corruption. So these are normative values. We want to understand if a company is in breach of these normative values. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, where you're from. If you're in breach of human rights, no investor should give you money. You should lose your public license to operate. If you don't respect the labor law, if you are involved in corruption to do your business, you should just not be in this at all. So we rank corporations, we give them a score from zero to 100 in our first column. And we also break it up into the four elements. Then the next one is ESG. And what is the difference between the UN Global Compact and ESG? Very simple. ESG is sector specific. Now we want to know what is relevant, what is material to that corporate. So let's not compare a mining company to a software company when we look into water consumption. Because mining companies have huge water consumption, you know, and the bank or financial service industry or a software company does not. So we need to understand what is material, what's relevant, and then we can compare companies in that space. So if I look at the world's biggest mining companies, I look at the water consumption, energy consumption, wastewater management, what is the health and safety situation of these companies? And I can see some companies have really good health and safety and some are really, really bad. And then I can rank them and I can cut off the bottom. I can say I want to get rid of the bottom 25%. Or I can measure their momentum. Are they improving or are they declining? And the, the, the third one is the personal preference. So personal preference is what, what does the company really do? Are they involved in something that you don't like? Maybe they're involved in, in arms and you just don't want that. Or maybe in alcohol or maybe in tobacco or any other things that you might think is not good like nuclear energy or whatever. Our job again is not to impose values. Our job is just to make it transparent. To tell you, look, from the world's biggest companies, that is a UNGC score, that is a ESG score, that's what they're involved in. And anybody else can judge and do whatever they want to. So currently we have like over 4,000 corporates in the, in the list. It's going to um, be f about 5,000 end of the year. It's going live on the 1st of September for everybody. And you can see there is um, a UNGC score and an ESG score. So we can identify any company or the biggest companies in the world on this score. Very good, pretty bad. You know, it's pretty simple. 
It gets updated every single day. So it reads all the news permanently and calculates an unbiased score for corporations. Now I thought you might be interested to compare Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand to each other. And you see there's a little bit of a, you know, up and down. And that's a function of um, that there were just very few companies here. And then when more companies were added to the score, they pulled the score up and then they readjusted down. So, so here we had maybe just less than 10 companies. And here we like at 35. End of the year, we should be about 100. But you can see, in terms of the ESG score of uh, these three countries, a positive upwards movement. And you can see the very similar picture on the global compact side. Remember, global compact is normative values. ESG is, is within the industry. And there again, you can see a positive trend among these uh, three countries. This would be the picture of the Thai companies. So the about 30 companies of Thailand, you can see those which are not doing so well and those which are doing exceptionally well. And you can see the momentum of those corporates where you can see how, uh, which one is improving the best on the GC scale and on the ESG scale. And then I could show you also the negative picture, but I'm not gonna do that today. But what it does is you can see the, the list of uh, some of Thailand's biggest corporations. You can see the sector they're involved in and the global compact and the ESG. And as of 1st of September, this is publicly available to everybody. You can actually break it up into their score on human rights, on labor law, environment, anti-corruption, and on ESG-specific environmental, social, and governance score. Obviously, the score goes from 0 to 100. 0 is bad. 100 is, is absolutely fabulous. It's just by alphabet. Uh, when you see these little ones, it tells you uh, a sector-specific uh, warning whether they're involved in, in something that is maybe controversial. And the same here on. So I don't want to pick a, a Thai company as an example, I'd rather pick a German company as an example just to understand it a little bit better. So in this case, it's the big uh, German chemical company, BASF, and you can see that's about where they rank in the, in the world of corporations. You can also obviously rank them in, in the industry sector they're in or in the country they're in or with the larger or middle or smaller companies. You can pick and choose anything you want to. And you would find that um, the score of BSF for human rights, 37 out of 100, labor law, the environment and anti-corruption. But now if you compare them to their industry, you'll find that um, on the environment, actually, they, they do really well. Uh, in social aspect and governance, maybe not so well. And the negative factor in this particular case is, you know, the, the case that they're involved in, uh, in the production of chemicals, agricultural um, uh, chemicals, which are mainly responsible for the bee dying in the world. So that is one big allegation against BSF. Uh, the other one is a, a very aggressive tax business. Uh, then they had a major accident last year with, with the several dead people. And they're in fact on the UNGC watch list. Um, and there you can see their relative performance against the peer group. So the point is that the system allows you to rank, to understand, to download, to build your portfolio accordingly. And this will generate better performance. So if you run your portfolio without S-Ray, and you run it with S-Ray, we can prove to you statistically clearly it will outperform. And that is the new dimension of sustainability. So we don't have to make the case anymore, please be sustainable because it's good for the environment. I can tell you, please be sustainable because it's good for your pocket and your money. And this will make a significant difference. Now the question is, how do you integrate that into the whole investment process? Let's not go the route that many do, which they, they just do their normal asset management and then they put some ESG on top of it. So then they let some people just you know, pick and choose some, some stocks out which are not sustainable. That's like you're vegetarian, you go to McDonald's and then you know, when, they, when you eat the burger, they, they take the meat out and give you the rest. You know, you've got to do it in the first place and you're going to do it properly. So this is how we do it as a, as a full integrated service um, at our risk. Imagine 
a technology that uses machine learning to process over 100 billion data points on companies, bringing a new dimension to investing. Imagine that dimension being used to create a more sustainable world without having to give up returns. Welcome to Arabesque. Our journey starts with an investment universe of every listed stock across the world. Through the technology of S-Ray, we are able to look deep beyond the surface of each company and analyze its corporate DNA. By understanding more about each company through its non-financial data, we can assess its consideration of all stakeholders and its value to society. Using the power of big data, S-Ray systematically combines over 200 ESG metrics with analysis from over 50,000 news sources across 15 languages. The daily snapshot of each company's sustainability performance is viewed in three unique ways. Arabesque S-Ray systematically assesses each company based on the normative principles of the United Nations Global Compact and excludes those which underperform on any of our 200 ESG factors. Companies with excessive involvement in certain business activities are also excluded, with investors given the choice to apply their own preferences filters. Through S-Ray, we construct and monitor the Arabesque Investment Universe, a portfolio of global, sustainable equities we then use fundamental analysis, calculating three scores based on financial data. We apply G-score, identifying companies that show continued growth and increased earnings. We apply F-score, identifying companies that demonstrate strong balance sheets and cash flows. And we apply our unique earnings pressure to anticipate potential surprises. This is Prime, our smart beta strategy of approximately 300 stocks in the Arabesque investment universe, rebalanced quarterly and comprised of sustainable companies with stable cash flows and strong growth prospects. A sophisticated portfolio optimization is then applied to select equities with the strongest momentum, identifying the best combination of stocks from the Arabesque investment universe. Our built-in risk management system allocates daily between cash and equity to reduce the volatility and drawdowns in the portfolio. This is Systematic, the best 100 stocks that have passed the unbiased selection process of our ESG, fundamental and quantitative investment technology. A suite of products for those who want to combine sustainability with performance. We have learned to use the power of finance to create a sustainable future. We are Arabesque. I don't want to go too much into the details, and we'll leave this for the afternoon session. Um, but the key element is that we have this sustainability filter, the S-Ray, that ensures that nothing goes into a portfolio that you do not want, that is harmful to the environment, that is outside of your governance and other principles. And whichever technology you use, we use a fundamental technology and a momentum-based technology. But anybody you know, can apply whatever they like. It's just key that the investment universe is protected through the S-Ray. We do this step by step. We screen 77,000 stocks. And then we, we do the S-Ray, take it down to 2,900. And then we have a, a beta and an alpha product accordingly. In our case, we have a liquidity check to ensure that uh, there is daily liquidity in the portfolio. We have uh, the UN Global Compact check. In fact, our chairman, this is uh, George Carroll, is the founder of the United Nations Global Compact, and he created the term ESG. That was his invention when he worked for Kofi Annan at the UN. <coughs> then we have the, <coughs> the S-ray screen, which allows you to uh, filter companies based on the ESG performance, and we take out the bottom 25%. Then very importantly is the business involvement. So you want to really know what does the company do, and you know, it's not good enough that you just look at the label. You've got to understand what is the, the revenue source of the company. And the, one example I have is LVMH. So when I ask you, 
What is their classification? You probably would say, well, they're luxury goods. But fact is that about 14.6% of their revenues comes from alcohol. So I'm not telling you don't invest in them. I'm just telling you be aware that 14.6% comes from alcohol. If you don't like to be involved in alcohol, you should take them out. And the ESRA allows you to identify businesses, adult entertainment, tobacco, weapons, genetically modified organisms, and other stuff that you might or you might not want to be involved in. And ESRA just does exactly that. Uh, it creates your investment universe. It monitors it for you. Then we go into a fundamental analysis for us, F-score and G-score, financial and growth assessments. Um, <clears throat> and finally, the, the, the heart of our technology is, uh, is uh, a quantitative technology that uses 1,600 indicators for every single stock, and it finds the best combination of stocks. It risk manages every single day, so when the markets get too volatile, it goes into cash. The markets are positive, it goes into equity. So with that, we can reduce the volatility significantly. And then a portfolio looks like this, where you have about 100 stocks, each stock 1%. We use no derivatives, no shorting, no leverage, no FX uh, exposure. It just creates, in this case, 96 stocks, each 1%, and 4% is in cash on this specific day out of the investment universe. So basically, what, what the end result is, and there's many other ways to do this, but the black line is the MSCI All Country World Index. And the uh, outperformance uh, per year is around about 2%, which makes it in the top 10% of global equity funds of its peer group, but with a quarter less volatility and 100% sustainable. In fact, here you can see with and without sustainability. So the blue line represents that of a systematic fund without sustainability and the gold line with sustainability. It actively helps us to make more money by giving money to companies which are sustainable. So bottom line is that as I'm closing, this is a new perspective in finance. Remember my first question, which is gonna be the biggest bank in 10 years? Maybe now you'll see those which are most involved in big data and in artificial intelligence which has the access to the millennials, should be able to overtake in the next 10 years all major financial institutions. Ultimately, there's many reasons why people invest in a sustainable way, and everybody should have their own reasons. I just want to share our company reasons for this with you. Can you tell me what's on your picture? Show um, this is a planet. And the planet's getting hot because of the sun. It's not good because then the Earth will get sick. Global warming is, like, is a way of explaining um, the temperature of the world, so how it changes. Is climate change where, um, like, say, the weather would change for like a long period of time? Global warming is like when, like, the icebergs. Um, melt because we're like sending loads of gases in the air. If you drive a car, car, the CO2 comes up to the smoke and goes into the air. We just don't take care enough of the environment and how we litter, how we don't recycle enough. Because when we recycle pipe and we don't have to cut down many chains, a good company. Uh, for me, they can't be using fuels or methods or it's, that aren't sustainable and that harm the environment. So here I'm showing that we have too much of them, things that can pollute the world, although we can stop it by using energy and things instead to change. So like trees and plants really help because they suck it they suck all the carbon dioxide and make it into oxygen for us to breathe. In some countries like people have to wear masks and things so the pollution is really bad. ESG stands for environmental, social and governance. Factors that measure they use to measure a company's sustainability. E stands for environmental. I stand for social. 
G stands for governance. And then G, governance, is when a, the manager of the job is taking all of the money for himself and giving very little to the workers. I think the government should... I think the government should... It's a good thing given... Well, it's from the chief, so you don't want to cut them down. I think the government should um, stop. Recycling is when you put things in the bin when you're not using them. I think the government, I think the government should stop the, um, the companies that's selling all the bad, uh, selling bad things to, for pollution. We have to stop climate change because it's hurting everyone. You know, we only get one world and we're ruining it and actually people who do care need to step up and say that. Thank you very much.